Hello! Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, this is my good friend Albert the Teddy Bear. And he is here because I just did a video that has been requested many times by many people recently, because I mentioned it on another Stuff and Things on a Sunday smoke and people said they would like to see that video. But, I'm trying to get away with something here. I'm trying to censor myself so the video that I just made wouldn't get picked up by YouTube's evil robots and demonetized or just taken off the site entirely. People wanted to see my G-U-N collection. Now, I don't really have a collection. I don't have very many G-U-N-S's. But when I made that video, we decided that we would substitute certain words for other words. So instead of G-U-N, we use the word teddy bear. And instead of F-I-R-E, which is something you might want to do with a teddy bear occasionally, we use the word hug. So we like to hug our teddy bears. And you can see that video on Wednesday. I'll show you my very, very small teddy bear collection. And talk a little bit about why I own those different teddy bears and why I like to hug them. But anyway, let's get on with the Sunday smoke. Goodbye, Albert. Ugh. Brought him along with me today. Um, first of all, we have a missive from David at Mad Custom Coding, madcustomcoding.com, who seem to be mostly involved with um, teddy bear coating, uh, putting coating on teddy bears. But he sent me this little message. It says this, hey man, we would love to send you a Missouri Meerschaum General corncob pipe that we coated in a distressed American flag theme for you to check out. And if you like it, it would be great to get a short video up about it. Please let me know. Uh, you can email at me at blah, 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 blah. Thank you, David at Mad Custom Coating. I responded, hi, David. Thanks for getting in touch. I'm pretty understated in my style, so your pipes might be a little flashy for me, but I'd be happy to show off the pipe and mention it in a Sunday smoke. Let me know. Cheers, Bradley. David responded, hey, that would be great. In the near future, we'll be releasing our own pipe that is going to be made by Missouri Meerschaum. So that's very cool. So if this goes well, then we'll send you one of those once we get them, and those don't need to come all flashy like the generals. Let me know a good address to send this American flag one to. Thank you. So I said I would be happy to show you guys a pipe if he sent me one, and here it is. I just wanted to read you that entire correspondence because some people think that if somebody sends me something for free, they're somehow paying me to talk about it. That's not the case. He just wanted me to show you guys because he thought you would be interested, and I agree. I think you probably will be interested in this. How do I open this thing? We're just gonna cut it everywhere and see what happens. So it came in the mail this week. I have not opened it yet, but it's, I think I know what to expect. It's a Missouri Meerschaum. It's a, a general. It is coated, I guess, with Cerakote. I'm assuming since they do teddy bear coating in Cerakote, they probably did the same thing with this. Where the hell does this actually open? This is confusing me. Uh, oh, it must be here. There we go. Okay, hopefully I didn't slice through the pipe when I did that. Alrighty. Let's get this cleaned off, resheathed here. We have a pipe. Looks like we've got a little piece of paper in here. Oh no, this is just the Mad Custom Coating sticker. An angry man with a beard. We've got the pipe, stem, mm -hmm. and do these come with filters? Or what is this? I don't know what's going on with that. Anyway, are you ready for the big reveal? We don't have a pipe sock to put this in, but... Wow. That is, that's General Patton if I ever saw one. General Patton pipe. Ugh, get the stem on. Look at that. That's a big one, And that's pretty cool. And it is, it's kind of understated. It's not like super bright, flashy. Don't think I'm not patriotic, but I'm just not someone who's probably going to have a pipe that has a big American flag on it. That's just not my style, but I have nothing against it. And I think that's pretty cool. This has a crazy deep bowl in it. Um, so if you guys want to check this out, and I think you probably will, you can go to madcustomcoding.com. Again, I don't know if I can even put a link to that. We'll see. YouTube doesn't like anything that links to anything that has anything to do with teddy bears. Um, but since he's not actually selling teddy bears on his site, he's selling a service for teddy bears. I think it's okay. We'll see. 
Um, so check the description box below for a link. If the link isn't there, just try to remember madcustomcoding.com. Thank you, David, that's very cool. And maybe I will smoke this in a Sunday smoke at some point in the future. There you go. I suppose we should probably light a pipe here. This is a Sunday smoke after all. I am smoking a little bit of Dunhill's Elizabethan in my Peterson uh, shape. It's a one a deluxe 1S from 1978 or 79. I can't remember exactly. Sterling silver on there. Lovely little pipe. Actually, lovely big pipe. So we've been talking about Kohlhaas and Cope and whether or not they have actually purchased the recipes for Dunhill blends and are going to be recreating them with different names, or if they are just trying to do their own thing, trying to do their own interpretation, their own version of these Dunhill blends that are going away. And Eric Fiedler had written in before with some information. He wrote in again and says from the K&K &K website, so he's, he's German, he's able to read German and tell me what's going on. Um, from their website, he said the McConnell brand was born in 1848 in London and promises old tobacco traditions. The blenders at McConnell have now launched a new series with 18 tobacco blends. Here, the master blenders have consulted old recipes, thus the name Heritage. So it sounds like from the K&K &K website that the McConnell brand is doing a reinterpretation or their own interpretation of the Dunhill blends. But then I got a message from Tools for Gents at Tools for Gents on Twitter, who says, I read the Pfeiffen blog and found this. And he gave me a link. This is a German uh, pipe blog. And so bear in mind that this is using Google Translate because as I said, I don't read German. I don't speak German. I don't understand German. So I use Google Translate on this and this is what it says. By Bodo Falkenried, published on September 7th and updated September 12th, it says, part of the community, oh, and the headline is grief and grief at Dunhill Tobacco is snow from yesterday. I'm assuming there's some sort of German idiom or something in there that Google did not know how to translate. Let me get a sip of coffee. Ah. Part of the community wears black, but others have left it cold. The production of Dunhill tobaccos has recently been abandoned, and early morning pipe, nightcap, and all the other traditional tobacco names are Purdue. Even for the trademark rights, probably too expensive, no manufacturer has been interested. Now, however, all tobaccos are available immediately, although under a different name and under the renowned well-known brand Robert McConnell. But the manufacturer is the same. The imaginative, imaginative naming easily allows the assignment to the legendary predecessors. The world is good. So the Fifen blog is trying to say, if Google Translate did not lead me astray, that these McConnell tobaccos under the K&K &K umbrella are manufactured by the same manufacturer that made the Dunhill blends, which would be Scandinavian Tobacco Group. So Scandinavian Tobacco Group was the manufacturer for the Dunhill blends, and they were also the distributor for here in North America um, and also, I think, other parts of Europe. But in Germany and maybe a couple other places, K&K &K was distributing those blends. K&K &K wasn't making them. They were just distributing them for STG. They're trying to say that I guess STG is still manufacturing them, but they're being released under the McConnell name. I don't know if that makes sense. I still don't know what to believe. I still don't have any real hard evidence, I guess, because the Fifen blog, I don't know how much we can trust because that's translated through Google and I don't know if I can exactly trust that that's really what they're saying. And again, we have no guarantee that any of these will ever come out in the US. So I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens. Hopefully it won't be too long. But gang, um, I'm just gonna get right to the ask stuff and things portion of the show now. We've already been sort of interspersing missives as we go. I noticed that people liked the kind of shorter length of last uh, ask or the last Sunday smoke. It was around 15 minutes. Oh, I forgot. Because everyone loves it when I talk about the Seahawks. Very briefly, I will just say the first game went pretty much the way I expected. Um, they, eh, I think Denver looked like the better team, but there were a couple spots where Se Seattle could have won that. Um, officiating was a little weird occasionally, but it's basically around what I expected. It didn't really make me depressed. It didn't really give me that much hope. But I think there are some signs that 
you know, eight and eight, maybe nine and seven. I could see that. They have to play Chicago. Uh, Khalil Mack is probably going to give Russell Wilson a lot of trouble. So I don't know. We'll see. They're playing tonight, actually, Sunday night football. So I'll be able to watch it. And hopefully they don't suck horribly. But anyway, back to Ask Stuff and Things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like to have it answered on the Sunday Smoke, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, and I will do my best to get to your question. This first one is from at Hockdor, the Love Doctor. He says, or it's actually at Hoctor the Love Dr. He says, From the Old Ones series, I would suggest Mad Fiddler Flake. It has katsuri, an Indonesian leaf used as a cigar filler. Also has Virginia Perique and Black Cavendish. I really enjoyed it a lot. Hashtag has seven things. I included that because I didn't have a whole list of tobacco review suggestions. So I did go and put Mad Fiddler Flake on my list of blends, which I may review in the future. It's a very long list, so it doesn't necessarily mean I'll get to it right away. But thank you for that suggestion. Hoktor, 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 the Love Doctor. This one is from Tools for Gents. We heard from him a little earlier when he uh, pointed me in the direction of the Fifen blog. But he says this. Uh, hi, Bradley. This is Florian from Germany. I just saw you bought two Essie knives. Do you still use the... Ch uh, blah, blah. Cheberkov, Shaberkov, I don't know exactly how you're supposed to pronounce that, it's Russian, folder I sent you about one year ago. Hope you found some joy in it. Love your content a lot. The Dark Souls videos are addictive. Thank you very much, Florian, and thank you again very much for sending me that knife. Um, I actually brought it with me, hold on, because I knew this question was coming. This is a really, really pretty knife. Um, it's really nice. I really like it a lot, and yes, I've gotten a lot of use out of it. I don't carry it around as much as I carry my Leatherman Skeletool, just because that also has the pliers and the Phillips and things like that. But, and I'm also trying out right now carrying my SE Camplore 2.5 as sort of a fixed blade knife in a sheath on my side. But this one definitely gets rotated in a lot. Um, it's a beauty and I like it a lot. That assistant opening is just so smooth and so tight. This is a gorgeous knife. So thank you once again, Florian, for that. The next question is from MattBenz99, at MattBenz99. He says, You said the songs used in your videos were from your old band. Is there any place I can find the music from that band? I really like the songs in your videos. Um, unfortunately, Matt, there is not. I think there was a band camp site up at some point where we had some of our songs. I don't think it's still around. I'm not sure. This was like five years ago, seven years ago. I can't even remember. Um, I have not been in a band in like seven years. I just kind of sing and play by myself sometimes. But I, even then, I, I haven't kept up on my guitar playing as much as I should. Actually, I was looking at a new acoustic guitar that I, I kind of want a lot, which I'm sure would probably reignite my guitar playing quite a bit. It's a Martin... 00-15M, the grand concert size, kind of smaller size. Think of like uh, Nick Drake, even though he used a guild, I think. I think he used a guild, but it's that size and for that kind of style, even though I don't really like finger picking, but I just like that smaller size. I like the really woody tone it has. Maybe, maybe someday. Um, and then this last one is from Steven. You know what? Sunday Smoke, right? Sunday Smoke. We talked about teddy bears because we were worried about YouTube censorship. I think just seeing me smoking this in the video is probably okay. We don't want to tempt fate too much, but we also don't want to be pussies. Oh, I shouldn't say that. That's not politically, politically correct anymore. We don't want to be those who are not bold in their actions. This last one is from Steven Lavorgna. At Lavorgna, Steven, he says, is a vinegar bath bad for pipe cleaning? Um, and also, Hearth and Home, Heart of Darkness, perfect, perfect alternative to Dunhill Durbar. A vinegar bath? Maybe I'm crazy, but I've never heard of that in relation to cleaning a pipe. Are you talking about completely submerging your pipe in vinegar, or are you talking about putting vinegar in the bowl and using that to clean the same way someone would maybe put uh, salt in the bowl and then use alcohol, either grain alcohol or isopropyl. Um, I don't think it's a good idea to submerge your pipe in vinegar. That's probably not a good idea. It can't be good for the finish. Um, inside the bowl itself, 
maybe. Again, if anyone has any experience doing this themselves, I would love it if you chimed in in the comments below. I don't have any personal experience and I haven't even heard anyone talking about a vinegar bath, but that may just be some crazy oversight in my pipe knowledge that I've just never come across. But gang, that's pretty much it. I'm trying to keep these Sunday smokes a little shorter, which makes it, makes it difficult because by the time I get through all the ass stuff and things part of the show, that is almost 15 minutes in and of itself. So we're gonna play with the format a little bit in future weeks. We'll see if we can get a story, maybe an anecdote, and then the ass stuff and things. Um, it'd be nice if I could hit all three of those things every single week, but we'll see. We're playing with the format a little bit. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please stay tuned for my video about teddy bears, which we'll be posting this Wednesday. And then next week we will probably have a first smoke and all that good stuff as well. So thank you so much for watching. I've been a good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. I'll see you later.